Welcome to episode number 323 of Category 5, Technology TV. 323. 323. It's November 26, 2013. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. And here is what's coming up in the newsroom. The computer program is analyzing images 24 hours per day to determine if a computer can learn visually like a human. Um, Apple has purchased the company that developed gesture control for Microsoft's Kinect sensor. And Stuxnet has been recognized as the world's first true cyber weapon. Uh, getting caught swearing on your Xbox, one console could lead to account feature restrictions. Mm. Stick around. These stories are kind of coming up later in the newsroom. Tonight we've got some in Linux tips for you. Yeah, they'll be, yeah. We'll, we'll have those stories later. Get off my camera. <laughs> All right, I was going to say, tonight we've got some Linux tips for you. We're going to be showing you a little bit of tricks in the terminal. Don't want to miss that. Also, we've got a tool for your Windows system to make your DNS servers run super screaming fast and make your internet seem like it's a lot faster than, uh, than it normally is. No. So it's going to be a great show. Don't go anywhere. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring... Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Hi, I'm Hilary Rumble. I'm one of the on air presenters on Category 5 Technology TV. I, along with a wonderful dedicated team, volunteer to make this show possible. Category 5 TV is a digital broadcast different from a traditional TV show. We interact live with our viewers, answering their questions in real time, and even demonstrating answers to tech questions right on the show. We are big community advocates. We believe everyone should have access to the help of others, and that everyone who is able should be willing to provide that help if another person seeks it. Kind of like the mentality of borrowing a cup of sugar from a neighbor, but on a grander scale. Our viewers tune in from around the world and interact with both the on-air team and the community itself through our live chat room. Category 5 is predominantly Linux-centered and we promote the use of open source software in order to both save you money and to demonstrate that there are viable open source alternatives to many software products. This gives like-minded developers and companies a platform to promote themselves and gives our viewers insight into their exciting products. We don't just tell you about it, we teach you how to use the software that we promote. We also provide tech-related advice including Microsoft Windows support, Linux how-tos, good security practices, and we feature exciting interviews with industry professionals in a wide range of tech categories. We've been broadcasting our show live every single week since 2007, and it's time for us to move into a permanent, sound-isolated studio and build a strong future for free online tech broadcasting. Along with the move to a permanent studio space, we hope to further improve the broadcast quality by adding new higher quality video cameras and sophisticated virtual studio sets, breaking us out of the confines of a small studio space using virtual reality. Why is this enhancement to the show so important to us? Simple. It will mean we will be able to catch the eye of more paying sponsors so we can continue providing this show to you, the viewers, absolutely free of charge. Here's our host, Robbie Ferguson, to show you just one of the exciting ways your contribution will enhance Category 5 TV. Now here's something we're really excited about bringing to Category 5's Studio D with your help. It's called Chromat from Reflect Media. Now with the traditional chroma key green screen studio, of course we'd have to paint the walls green. And that brings with it a problem. Green reflections. So, of course, you know, my skin, uh, sometimes our clothes and products that we're displaying are going to actually reflect the green that's around us. 
So that becomes a problem, and it makes it hard to key. So, of course, everybody who has ever built a green screen studio knows what does that mean? you got to bring in more lights. So in come the lights, and you've got all these great big soft boxes. They generate a lot of heat. They use a lot more electricity. And here's the kicker. They use up a lot of your floor space. We want to avoid that completely. That's where Reflect Media comes in. This stuff's amazing. We've got a light ring adapter on this camera, and we place one of these on each of our cameras here at Category 5. And then with the, fl uh, the simple flip of a switch on this controller module, and you'll see that the gray screen that I'm standing in front of automatically turns into this perfect chroma key green. And it's perfectly illuminated. I didn't have to bring in any extra lighting. So what that means is we're able to utilize all the space of Studio D. You'll see that to the naked eye it's still just a gray screen but to this one camera it's perfect chroma key green so now we've got all that extra space that we're not using for lights and we're able to for example enhance our news segment make it look like a professional network broadcast or perhaps you'd like to see category 5 technology TV broadcasting from a multi-million dollar studio well or so it seems I mean everything around me is of course virtual but that is what your contribution can bring to Category 5 TV. We're not just building a studio. What we're doing is we're enhancing Category 5. We're taking ourselves to the next level and taking your show, propelling it into the future. Awesome stuff. That technology, along with new HD cameras and a sound isolated studio space, means giving our viewers the best digital broadcast possible with better visuals and higher quality video. We are committed to always offering Category 5 absolutely free to its viewers. It's like having a free technical support team who provide you a step-by-step -step assistance when you need it. More than that, we also strive to make Category 5 entertaining, so you get the best of both worlds. You tune in each and every week having learned something new and had fun learning it, as well as being a part of a generous and very caring community. Because we do this all for free, we need our viewers to stand by us as we raise the funds to bring Category 5 TV into the next era of broadcasting. It takes a lot of money to get there, and we sincerely need your help. We have a big vision, and while we could do everything for under $90,000, the one thing we really need to do is build the studio itself. Believe it or not, that'll only cost us $17,500. It's a lot of money to any one of us, but with your help and the help of other viewers and fans of the show, we can do it. To put it into perspective, if just 350 people give $50, the new studio would be built. If you don't think your contribution will make a big difference, think about this. If every single person who watched our show last week alone were to give just $2, we'd exceed our highest goal. That's amazing! And it goes to show that even a little bit helps but it requires all of us working together. Don't hesitate. No matter what the amount, please show your support for Category 5 Technology TV and contribute what you can. There are many exciting perks being offered as thanks for your contribution, and everyone who contributes will receive a downloadable copy of a documentary-style film we're producing detailing the studio build and all that it involves. Not only will you get to see how your contribution was used and how the exciting features of our new studio will come together, but you'll also receive a wealth of new educational material as our contractor, Bill Ballantyne, walks you through everything from soundproofing to drywalling and set design. We'll also detail many of the technical aspects of the build and even provide behind the scenes footage exclusive to the documentary. Please click the big pink Contribute Now button at cat5.tv slash studio. From Robbie, me, and the whole team at Category 5, and our community of viewers, thank you for supporting Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks, Hillary. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. Nice to see you, Eric. Hey, it's nice to be seen, you know, mm. get up to this age. A big thank you to all the uh, viewers who have sent in donations this week. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the final week of our crowdfunding campaign. Uh, like, that is, there's no time left. Please show your support for the Category 5 Technology TV at cat5.tv slash studio. Uh, together, we can do this. Really believe that. And yeah. uh, Hillary al alluded to the fact that we do have some great perks there. Uh, we have... Our business card set. Oh, I wish that I had one on the set with me. Do you have a business card? We have really nice business cards here at Category 5. They're designed by our very own Crystal Wells. 
they're basically the the coolest business card ever. They're double sided, and each card has the picture of the person who it's whose card it is. So Eric Kid. Cool. So we've had everybody sign, autograph their business cards. You can actually pick those up as perks. If that's not good enough for you, we do have Category 5 vinyl stickers, which are a hot uh, item on our campaign. And you can actually get a vinyl sticker, which you can stick to your laptop. Because of the material, it's like a vinyl, literally. Um, it, it can be stuck onto a laptop or a window or a car, and you can peel it off, and there's no residue. It's a very good quality, nice sticker. So, nice. Um, yeah, and that's the Category 5 TV logo. Also, for $40 dollar contribution you can actually pick up three months of free long distance with net talk duo 2 uh, you can actually get the device plus you get the three months of free long distance and then if you want to extend it beyond the, f the first three months it's only the cost of a couple of cups of coffee per month and you get unlimited long distance to Canada and the US so we were thinking about what can you do with the net talk duo and if you were to pick up two of them you can actually activate one in Canada or the US and then ship it overseas, send it to a loved one, and then you've got free calling to and from that loved one. Ooh. But also, that loved one can now call Canada or the US absolutely free. That's ah, kind of neat. So they're cool. not limited to only calling you overseas. They can actually call anywhere in Canada or the US for free. So if I were to activate one of these, for example, and send them to, uh, say, a viewer in the Netherlands, can we think of one? I can't think of one. Let me jot then something that, down here. Yeah, so that viewer uh, would then be able to actually call <coughs> us, the studio, as a local call, but could also call down into New York or call anywhere in Canada. Very so cool. that's really cool. Um, so that's you know one way that you can get a uh, one perk that you can get through cat5.tv slash studio. Also, I do want to mention we saw um, in Best Buy, these are now available, the NetTalk Duo. As well, they throw in a couple of extra uh, handset cordless phones oh. from VTech. So that's a bonus. Um, so you can actually get a NetTalk uh, Duo, which has the one-year service, with two wireless handsets for $99.99. Um, so I set up a link for you uh, for that device. If you'd like to check it out, it's cat5.tv slash VoIP, V-O-I-P. And uh, check that out. It's available through Best Buy Canada. So great deal thanks to net talk uh, for supporting our uh, that is very our cool. campaign as well and uh, every everyone who has uh, been a part of our our fundraising campaign uh, i want to also make a mention <laughs> pardon me tonight you can take tonight at 10 o'clock okay so after the show tune in to computer america it's computeramerica.com and uh, I'm actually going to be interviewed on, on Craig Crossman's show. And uh, so looking forward to that. We're going to talk a little bit about Category 5, what makes us unique. And uh, we're going to be able to share that with that, interna or that national uh, radio broadcast that also broadcasts internationally through, uh, through the podcast. So that's exciting. Very cool. uh, and again, that is ComputerAmerica.com. And we'd love to have some of our uh, viewers, our listeners, uh, in fact, join us. Uh, for that broadcast tonight. Again, that's 10 o'clock, and that is my time, so that's Eastern time. Um, so basically, once the show is over tonight, two hours following, uh, I'm going to be live at ComputerAmerica.com. All right, so you can awesome. check out our show at m.cat5.tv if you've got your mobile device. Bring it up, scan the code. <laughs> <laughs> Those sound effects aren't real. I just They don't come with the phone. <laughs> they don't come with the site, but m.cat5.tv is a great place uh, to be able to get Category 5 on your mobile, your tablet, All right. anything like that. And did you know Category 5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network? If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. That's the, so that's the sound of the cat phone ringing. The cat phone. It's active. If you have a question for us tonight, 2545 Cat 5 TV will get, uh, get through to the studio here. We'd love to have your question live on the show. Wow. Also, you can email Eric live at category5.tv. I'm going to do what I do with all my friends and ignore you. Oh. No, he would <laughs> never do that. He only does that to me. <laughs> IRL. IRL. So, what have you been up to? Just real briefly, off the top of the show, things going well? Well, you know... You've been gigging and... <laughs> I know, I'm one of the holdouts. I love my BlackBerry, but my bold... Uh, okay, what happened? Well, you know, 
At first, it started randomly shutting off and rebooting in the Which middle Which model? My Bold. Bold. My Bold. It was That's nice. reasonably new, like a year old? Yeah, or yeah, about that. Nice. Yeah. Actually, the screen resolution, it, it was a smaller screen than the uh, than the Torch, but okay. the resolution was great, and it seemed like a nice, lightweight little phone, but it started randomly rebooting on me and dropping calls, and oh. it would reboot, and then... I never liked a phone Then it would shut calls. down and mm. start up again and then this one time it didn't start up again so oh dear luckily so you had you know how phone. robbie likes to talk about backups i had a backup and i was able to <laughs> <laughs> i'd back up my uh my bold and uh, so could you just take your sim card out of the old i took one my sim card out and my memory card and i fired up the old torch and there you go and uh, and it works better all my data are there and i haven't lost a call since mm-hmm. and How's service been? I know BlackBerry has seen some. Actually, it's you know it's been seems, rough for them. Yeah, the past yeah, while. yeah. They've been taking a beating. But yeah, it, it seems to. Uh, well, I like the fact that it's a Canadian company. Yeah, but, no, I, I uh, give, you know, I I give mean, them that. There's all kinds sure. of philosophical reasons for it. I don't know. Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm entering into this next phase with trepidation, but I'm looking at the uh, maybe the. Uh, the, the Z30 or something. but So you're looking at we'll see. getting something we'll see. new in the line? I just don't know that I could ever live in you're Apple holding World. holding on until I death not does live part, in yeah. Apple World, you know? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe well, there's Android. Android. I, I know mean, there's that's Android. The I, I, I love my tablet, my Android tablet. But, uh, yes. Yeah. You but. don't want to hold it to your ear, though, and make a call. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you can get handsets. Well, was that you? Yeah, it's just like that. <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> my first cell phone was... <laughs> it was kind of like, it was like and that. I had a lunchbox that went with spiral it. cord. It was great. That, yeah, that, I hear you. Uh, I hear you. <laughs> good times. Yeah. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I'm having fun. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us yeah, tonight. It's so nice to see me, he says. He gave me a glass of water with, I was with water you. in it. I was talking oh, to you. Oh, okay. Um, and speaking of nice to see, uh, we've had a few registrations on our website, category5.tv, this week. I'm going to let you take a stab at the names because... Then I can just read all the easy stuff. I'll read the last one. Okay. <laughs> I might have to squint a little bit here. He's getting, have, it's getting old. Well, it could be... These are our new registered viewers. It could be Riz and Jeff, or Riz and Jeff. Uh, it's Riz French. And Jeff? All of a sudden, it is French if he doesn't know be, how to yeah. pronounce it. What was that uh, in Greece? There was Riz... No, Riz and Jeff. Anyway, 19 sick run 70. Hey, Nice okay, nice I, I, I'm assuming this, there's a 1970 reference there with a sick run in the middle. Oh. Which is kind of, hey, that's sick. Sick <laughs> run, man. <laughs> okay. That yeah. was the year. The year. Uh, 1970. We my employee promise. 8. Employee 8. Huh. Nice okay. to have you here. And You guys make it nice and hard for him. Thank you. I Ortiz Victory. Could be. Mm-hmm. I Ortiz, it's French for victory. Remember. It's all. French. I was thinking it was Spanish with the Ortiz in there. Yeah. I'm or so. tis victory. Could be okay, and we'll move on to H S I M. His Simignu. Oh yeah. His Simignu. Maybe if I say it fast a bunch of times. Thanks for registering. Yes. H S. Oh, can I do the last one? Okay. Welcome. To Devi. Is it Devi? I think Devi. As in deviance we'll or Devi. deviation? Or? Oh, don't do that to me now. <laughs> None of us is right. Nice to have you joining the Category 5 community. Category5.tv. And, and it's free to sign up. My apologies. Blanket apology for yes. the pronunciation, Just sir. All through the show tonight. We've got news coming up. We've got all these things coming up. We're going to mispronounce things. And uh, we'll just we'll say it's because we're Canadian. <laughs> eh? Eh? Oh, we're going to fight over it, too. Our pronunciations. That's we're always the... fighting over something. Well, hey, Lifehacker posted something interesting this week. They did. Which made me think. There are all these kind of little hidden... Yeah, they tend to do that, eh? There are all these little <laughs> hidden intricacies to bash in Linux and the terminal that you don't necessarily think to, in fact, tap into. And one of those commands is what simply... What are you bashing? Normally, it's Microsoft you're bashing. Oh, sorry. Never mind. We sorry. don't bash Microsoft. <laughs> We just state the truth. We're all about truth here, Eric. So if it comes out as if it's bashing, come on. All right. 
Bringing up the Linux terminal. There it is. There was a challenge to pronounce the new uh, register in the IRC there. Uh, oh, good. J. Villanueva. I don't know. All right. Let well, me know then. how I did. Let him know. Okay. Well, oh. the command that we're thinking about tonight, which I thought was, yeah, that's interesting, is simply explanation point, explanation point. Do you know what that does? Let's them know you really mean it. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what! You just don't know I how to I really use want to do this command. <laughs> <laughs> what explanation point, explanation point in bash does is simply repeats the last command. Great. Oh, whereas in Microsoft, you can just. Well, arrow there's. Up. Yeah, there's Jeez. history too. Okay. So you've got the arrow keys. So let's say, you know, I'm at whatever and I do an ls. There we go. So I can arrow up and oh, see. Okay, I, can, I can navigate okay. like that back and forth, back and forth. Okay. But if I really want just. The last command, I can go explanation mark, explanation mark, and it does an ls. So why does that matter? Well, this is where they, they made a good, good point on Lifehacker, which was, well, why don't we use that when we forget to type sudo? So just a little tidbit for you from, from Lifehacker and something that I thought I would share. Smart idea. So let's say, okay, I've got a file. CD temp. I'm going to make a file. We're going to touch test.txt and I'm going to ch own I'm going to sudo ch own test.txt to root there we go so now if I try to remove test.txt do you want to remove the right protected file yes operation not permitted oh well, that was dumb I forgot wah I want really badly to delete this file, and I forgot to type sudo. I am not root. I can't do it. Don't have enough power. <laughs> so, what do I do? I love this cold, by the way. <laughs> I was thinking after the show we're going to record a whole bunch of spots. What do yes. you say? Yes, yes, we'll do that. And we're not shaking hands. We're, you know, I saw it on Something CBC fist. that this is saving lives. Yes. The the you know they they saw they saw uh, you know Michelle and Barack do that and yes. it, a lot of folks and sports guys are well, doing. Some it. I just thought they were cool. And and actually it's uh, and then they they did swabs on people's hands after a handshake wow. or with a fist pump, and it's saving lives. The more you and know, preventing you learn it here on Category Five. So the next time I'm in an interview in a meeting with a you know a job prospect or something, like, hey, with the dude. <laughs> All right, yeah. give me some fist. Nobody All right, yeah. so I did that, right? And I say, huh, well, okay, so sudo rm test.txt is usually the way to do it, or you might press up home sudo is another way to do it. But watch this, sudo, explanation, explanation, enter, done. That was exclamation, not explanation. Yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> Finding an explanation, not an exclamation. It removed it. Oh, now if I do it, it doesn't exist. It's gone. Pseudo, super user do, excla exclamation, exclamation, <laughs> will repeat the last command, but do it as super user. That's kind of awesome. Like just as a, a yeah. time saver, especially when you've done an apt get install yeah, it, and then a whole bunch of program and names. Like, yeah, 87 and it's a long, long multi-line yeah. thing. That's a pain. So similarly... Bash command, exclamation, minus one will do whatever was your history one time ago, two times ago, three times ago. So you could do, you know, like if I did a touch test.txt and then ls test.txt. So now exclamation, exclamation will be ls test.txt, exclamation minus one, which now is, okay, now I'm getting really complicated. <laughs> exclamation <laughs> minus three minus three now but you get the idea see it, it increments every time there it is so three times ago so one two three four well four now because I already <laughs> entered another maybe you want to put a space before it because if I had done that minus four with a space minus four I keep four. digging see, and I can't it never get changes this now. <laughs> it never changes now Stays, it doesn't increment if I put a space first. Okay? The more you know. 
What are you laughing at? <laughs> I told you, I'm just happy to be here, glad to be alive. Me too, me too. Could be oh, worse, right? right. Could be worse. Could be two of me. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, let's put up our Windows 8 machine. And uh, I suppose we'll get right into the news um, as that's booting up, because, you know, Windows. <laughs> Did he do it? Did he? All right. Well, well. Here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Well, wait for me. You told me to read it while you were doing it. I know. <clears throat> the, uh, the cough medicine is, is wonderful. <laughs> Take it away. All right. A computer program is trying to learn common sense by analyzing images 24 hours a day. The aim is to see if computers can learn in the same way a human would that links images to help them better understand the visual world. This is assuming the human can learn. Right. And it's some of assumption. us are challenged. Mm. The never-ending image learner, Neil, program is being run at Carnegie Mellon University in the United States. The work is being funded by the U.S. Department of Defense's Office of Naval Research and Google. Hmm. Since July, the Neil program has looked at 3 million images. As a result, it has managed to identify 1,500 objects in half a million images and 1,200 scenes in hundreds of thousands of images, as well as making 2,500 associations. Yes. Hmm. The team working on the project hopes that Neil will learn relationships between different items without being taught. Well, that's something. You know, that's kind of neat, and I think about... With this kind of thing, I'm always thinking about person of interest and that whole mindset, that whole idea of a computer system that's big enough and intelligent enough to learn our faces and learn the things that are happening based on what it sees, what it hears. And that's inevitably, you know, that's the ultimate surveillance, really, yeah. when it comes down to it. So ominous, yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome, too. Maybe even in its original meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Prime Sense is an Israeli firm that specializes in making 3D motion detection technology. They're best known for developing gesture control for Microsoft's Kinect sensor, and they have made strides towards bringing the technology to mobile. Well, they've been bought by Apple. Really? Yeah. Hmm. The deal is likely to spark speculation about plans to develop new products such as Apple TV. Prime Sense confirmed the deal with Apple in a statement to the BBC, but said they could not comment further. Later All right, on. so we don't know anything more. It's happening, but, it's but happened. we're not going to tell What happens you if you know Apple all of a sudden brings out devices that have motion control? What do you think about the tablet and how that would change things? Wow. Well, no, I don't want to think about but it. But Apple TV, or any TV device, that, for that matter, that would have it integrated. That'd be cool, too. That would be. Mm -hmm. Accessibility yeah. for iPhones. Might be good. Who no, knows? Black, no, Who no, knows? never mind. Leave BlackBerry out of it. Stuxnet's creators recognized that they had built the world's first true cyber weapon and were more interested in pushing the envelope of this new type of digital warfare than causing large-scale destruction within targeted Iranian nuclear facilities, a study shows. Oh, in an analysis released last week, Ralph Lange, or Langner, um, head of the Langner Group, has renowned expert has a, and a renowned expert in industrial control systems, is refuted also refuted arguments that only a nation state had the resources to launch a Stuxnet like attack. Assailants with less ambition could take the lessons learned and apply them to civilian critical infrastructure, he said. Langner concluded that Stuxnet comprised two radically different destructive payloads. Uh, the first one, which had been around at least since 2007, was much more complex and was capable of causing catastrophic damage by increasing the pressure within centrifuges used to enrich uranium. <coughs> the second payload, which came years later, was much simpler, manipulated rotor speed, so, so centrifuges could be damaged uh, enough to force Iranian engineers to replace them, causing continuous delays. He described Stuxnet as a low-yield weapon with the overall intention of reducing the lifetime of Iran's centrifuges and making the Iranians' fancy control systems appear beyond their understanding. 
That's ominous. That is ominous. And the story comes from PC World. It's legit. Mm. You, you mean that wasn't from the National Enquirer? No, it wasn't. Wow. It wasn't some obscure blog. <laughs> and the fact that, okay, yeah, it's confirmed the Stuxnet was in fact designed to damage repeatedly the nuclear facilities. Yeah. Wow. That's really scary That's, stuff. Yeah. Users of Microsoft's Xbox One console caught swearing in video clips are having their accounts suspended. So everybody. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I just, I digress. <laughs> my, my, my son plays. <laughs> and, you know, calm, calm, calm. And, yeah. my goodness, some of the stuff that, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, then it's all calm again. And then, oh, yes. And then more outbursts. What kind of games are they? I mean, it's not Mario, right? It's not Mario. Exactly. Uh, Xbox Live, which allows users to upload media files, including videos they have made, and take part in multiplayer games, was available on previous Microsoft consoles. But Microsoft says the new Xbox One console has a more sophisticated system of enforcement. Files containing excessive profanity will be taken down, and their owners will have access to some features on Xbox Live removed. Microsoft said that all files uploaded to its upload studio were monitored for violations of its code of conduct. They mm. say the review process is to help maintain a clean, safe, and fun environment for all users. According to Microsoft, direct peer-to-peer -peer communications such as Skype, chats, and calls are not monitored by the Xbox Live enforcement team. Well, it's a good thing they said that. Or, now we feel or better. Or are they? Oh. Ooh. Speaking of I ominous, no, no. Hmm. Is it a violation of the user's right to use their device? To you know, I don't know. Limit the their usability of, of the device that they purchase. What's offensive? Where do, where is that line? Am I allowed to say damn? Well, the fact is, is where is the line when it comes to gaming? I, I'm not one who's going to sit down at a game and start cursing at it and record that and then put it up on the internet. That's not me. But fact is, is that's really largely you know that's you know yeah. that's why i keep my kids away from youtube searches for game footage it's plain and simple because i expect that um so but who knows maybe it's a maybe it's a good thing what do you think let us know in the chat room category five on free note is it a violation of users freedom of speech even well, or is it a violation for them to be posting things that they should be smart enough to say, you know what, maybe that's over the top? You know, I, I agree some things I, I find disturbing, but who's making these decisions for me? That's my mm -hmm. concern. I mean, you say things that upset me. They're always... Should I take you down? Really nice. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that one alone We We stopped talking about BlackBerry. <laughs> I want to say hello to everybody who's watching Category 5 tonight uh, from various devices on YouTube, on Blip TV, on FirstRun.TV, on Miro Internet TV. Thank you so much for tuning in to Category 5 Technology TV tonight. Of course, our website is www.category5.tv. I'll throw it up on the screen just below. And uh, if you want to go over there, check out what we're all about and find out... Uh, Ah, check out some of the back episodes. Do you know that we are available back to Season 4? So we're in the midst of Season 7. So we've got Season 4, 5, 6, and 7 all available for on-demand viewing on our website, Category5.tv. And that's growing. We are working back in time, getting Season 3, getting Season 2, and inevitably, eventually, having Season 1 up there for the real nostalgia fans. You won't be the bald nerd back then, will you? A little bit more scruff. <laughs> I've got the the kind of the winter. No, I'm saying back in season in. one, you. Uh, Did I have a bit more? I think you had a little more. A little bit, not really. More. I lost it all when I was twenty. Okay. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so let's check out Microsoft Windows. I've got Windows 8.1 up on my screen here. There it is. How do you like that? That's and what we're doing tonight? Lovely. Yeah, and we've. We've had the discussion before, Eric, about how the use of various DNS servers are going to affect, impact the perceived performance of your internet connection. So it kind of boils down to, okay, well, what is a DNS server versus bandwidth or internet speed? So, you know, if I bring up my web browser, 
let's go over to speedtest.net to get an idea of how fast my internet is. Speedtest.net. It's one that I like. There are many, many different service like providers. Yeah. They have an app for any device, so you can install it on your There's Android an app device. For that. Yeah. And then you can, you know, I use it on client sites and be able to tell approximately how fast their internet is and it helps you to rule out some problems. So let's see what happens here with the Category 5 Studio. So you simply click Begin Test. It pings out to the internet and tells us what kind of ping response you're getting and then what kind of download and upload speed that you're getting. So here, sound effects? Yeah. So here at uh, Category 5 Studio, we have a dreamy 200 and some odd megabits a second down. And up, see this is where ISPs in Canada have a real problem. Watch this. Look at the difference. So 200 meg down. Fantastic. Up. What's that? Eight. Eight. Ish. We're supposed to have about 10. We're streaming right now, so to be fair, we're pumping out quite a bit of data. But there you go. So we've got about 10, uh, 10 up and about 200 and something down. That's great. That tells us how fast our internet connection itself is. So that's the transfer of a file from you know, a server to our computer or vice versa. When I go to a website though, I'm going through what's called a DNS server, domain name server, because every server that's on the internet has an IP address. It's like a phone number for that particular server. So if I want to get to Google, I'm actually getting to their IP address. So if I go into my command prompt here on Windows and I ping Google, so ping google.com, I'll see that their IP address is 64.71.249.89. Wow, don't you love how you still have to mark just like the good old Windows 3.1 days? Hit enter. There you go. So if I go to that IP address, should be Google. the IP of their server anyway. That's what it's responding as. Is it going to go? There it is. Google, right? But it's an IP address. So when I go to google.com, what actually happens there? It communicates with what's called a DNS server. And the DNS server says, OK, you're looking for google.com. Now I need to point you to this IP address right. and tell that IP address what to serve up. So you notice that it's redirected now to uh, Google.ca. Their geolocation it's like has the said, no, you're book, in Canada. You know, what's Robbie's phone number? You look it up. Oh, it's this is number, and then it goes mm -hmm. in. It's a little quicker than that, though. A little bit. So DNS is the lookup that happens when you type in a domain name. So nobody uses IP addresses to get to websites. So perceptively, even though I've got fast internet, if I have slow DNS, it's going to take five seconds before it even realizes that, okay, Google.com is, is actually this. this IP. So there's a delay getting to the point where it redirects to that server. So the trick is, is that we want to have a very, very fast DNS server, which your ISP by default probably isn't one of the fastest ones in the world. So tonight we're going to learn how to replace our default DNS server on Microsoft Windows. This will work with Windows XP 7. Uh, Vista, whatever, and here I am on Windows 8.1. It'll work on all of the above. So go to cat5.tv slash DNS Jumper. DNS Jumper is a free piece of software that's going to allow you to detect what the fastest DNS server is and instantly change it. <laughs> so check this out. Be careful. On this site there are a fair number of ads and when I was here earlier I saw a few that said, download now, download now. There's one, start download up at the top. That's not actually the download. If I point to it, you'll see that it's actually linking to Google Ads. Mm, so watch it. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to click on that. It's going to take me somewhere else. Scroll down, and there's the, there's the actual download link. If I point to it, you see that it's actually linking to DNS Jumper download .p, downloads.php. Click on it. There's the file. I'm going to open it getting a security scan and there it is so now I'm gonna right click on the folder and copy go to my desktop right click and paste there's no installation process 
I've just extracted DNS jumper onto my computer. So let's bring that up and now double click on the application. Do we want to allow it? Yep. Okay. So here we are, DNS jumper, nice and simple interface. What do you want to do? You'll see that uh, it's defaulting to the server that I use. What we want to do, we can change the DNS server to any, you know, from US to UK. Change it to one of the defaults that are in there. Or, here's what we want to do. Click on Fastest DNS. Nice and easy. Right click on one of the checkboxes and go Mark All and then Find Fastest DNS. It's testing all of those DNS servers to find which one is responding quickest to my computer. So the answer that it gives, that it gives it's going to be quite different for me than somebody who's watching right now in the UK. For me, it said that this DNS server in the United States is going to be the fastest. So what do I want to do? Apply fastest DNS. Done. So now it's actually set my DNS servers to those IPs automatically on Microsoft Windows. So, okay, well I don't use Windows as my core operating system. I'd rather this impact my whole network. So now that using that Windows tool, I've determined what <laughs> my fastest DNS servers are. There they are, 208.76. You can see them there. Now that I know what the numbers are, I can take those and I can put them in as the primary and secondary DNS servers on my router. I can put them as my primary and secondary DNS servers on my Linux installation or any device at all. Now what if you did the test now, do you think you'd get the same results? If I did it, you know, at any time? Yeah, I mean, I suppose it, is this just a, a time slice? Sure. And these were the fastest ones, yeah, and then 20 minutes later we'd get different ones? Or? There's always load to, uh, to think about, but I'm certainly, you know, I'm seeing some that are 300 milliseconds. See, right, there, so you don't <laughs> want to pick one of those. There it gave me a different one. There's a different one. But they're all, you know, within... Uh, a variable threshold based on whatever. Okay. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm not trying to I be argumentative. You. I'm just wondering, is that one even in, he is in always the top argumentative. in the top ten this time? Or well, did I don't we just know. That I one forget what one it was. It was uh, 208. Uh, it wasn't, was it? Smart uh, Viper. There it is. Yeah, it was 208. 24 milliseconds for my first ping. Um, 76 for my it was second. 50, 50, and then 51, yep. 51. 24 milliseconds this time. Which and the one that it's recommending, yeah, it's the one that it's recommending was 24, and then 30 was the second ping. So 76 was my second ping on Smart Viper. Okay. So it can vary. And so you want to actually run this tool, say, once a month, see what, you know, because there are okay. different things that impact the speed of the DNS servers. But the key thing to note is that having run this on any Windows system on your network, you can now take that IP address for the primary and secondary and paste that into any of your devices. And I suggest putting it in your router. And then right, got, and that would make everything. It would take all of the devices. Right. Yeah. So how do you like that? I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. So hey, do you have some viewer questions that have come in during the course of the show? Well, I don't know. Should we do this Firefox update? Click. Now we can save that for after. We should uh, always always do your updates, except when you're live on the air. <laughs> it's the only time when not to. All right. Well, let's see. Where should we start? A viewer question from Chaz Linux. Hey, Chaz Linux. Uh, Robbie, I'm building a 0 plus 1 RAID array with four identical hard drives. All right. I learned that you shouldn't use the onboard motherboard RAID controller because if the board ever dies, so does your RAID. My question is, should I install Linux to the first drive, then use MDADM to create the second as a stripe and the third and fourth as mirrors of the first, or do I do this all during the initial install, setting the first and second as striped and the third and fourth as mirrored? You know I'm hopped up on NyQuil. <laughs> that was a lot. Want me to repeat the question? <laughs> okay, so we've got four hard drives. Maybe help me to understand it. Four hard drives. 
Uh, zero plus one raid array. Okay, so we've got Doesn't a... want to use the onboard controller. Should he install Linux to the first drive, then use the MD admin ADM to create the second... Software tool for Linux terminal. Right. Um, so a zero plus, plus one is basically uh, a raid one, which okay. is... It can be either, either way. Um, zero plus one versus one plus zero. Not sure which one you're going for. Um... Basically, the two ways that it can be is it can be a mirror and another mirror and those striped. Okay, so you get the speed benefit of a RAID 0, not fully, but it, it's, it's still a bit better than just a RAID 1 for sure um, because you've got four spindles as opposed to just two. Um, or it can be striped, so two drives striped, another two drives striped, and then those are now a mirror set. That's, I think, what he's doing. So, uh, yeah, I can understand why you wouldn't want to do it with the motherboard because if your mother motherboard gets zapped and then you have trouble finding one with the exact same chipset, then <coughs> it can be a problem. You're in trouble. Yeah. Software-wise, regardless of what you use, um, fact is, is you're going to need to get that set set up in such a way that it's. Um, that you can have your operating system running on that array. So, I don't know, where, where, are we, where does he want to go with it? What's the best idea? Yeah. What's the best plan? Yeah, or do I do this all, and, you know, so, yeah, third and fourth is first, or do I do this all during the initial install, setting the first and second is striped and the third and fourth is mirrored? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I guess he wants you to tell him what to do. Yeah, I know, and that's yeah. a tough one because I, I don't really know what you're, what you're using it for. You know, what is this? Is this for a workstation? Um, if you're in the chat room, let us know. And I see your name there. So, is it for a workstation that you just want a fairly powerful um, drive? Um, to be honest, these days, depending on how much space that you need, you're going to get better performance from an SSD, a single SSD, than you will from a zero plus one RAID. In most cases, you're going to get a, a better throughput for for writing and reading from from the drive simultaneously. So, it really depends on what you're doing. And I'm sorry that I am, you know, a little bit, little bit unclear with regards to the question. Chess Linux, feel free to clarify it for me, okay? And uh, if I can help, I certainly will. But these days, like we had a RAID zero plus one in our, uh, actually two RAID zero plus ones in our broadcast system. And we were constantly hitting bottlenecks. I had one of the raids for reading, so that was the operating system and software, mm -hmm. and one of them for writing, which was the actual record to disk of our video at 720p. Sometimes we're hitting bottlenecks, and things would suddenly the CPU would spike, and it's it's we've determined that it was the hard drives, two raid zero plus ones, and so I decided, okay, well we need to get this fixed. Stuck a single. Um, uh, SSD in there that's about 560 megabits, no, pardon me, megabytes per second, and uh, and it runs screaming fast, way faster than the performance we were getting off of those six drives. So, so I would look at you know. What about ZFS? Well, that's that's again. I don't know what your what yeah. the purpose behind this is. So if ZFS was, you know, if you're looking at storage, for example, creating a NAS box or something, then that's a different thing altogether. Looks like it is a, a video workstation, not working in high def. Um, so, will you be backing up? That would be the question if you're doing video, because you, you need space, so a RAID 0 is really a nice way to go, because then you have a lot of speed and a lot of space. You get double the space. So if you had a RAID 0 with four drives, yeah, you've got a much higher chance of failure, but if you're backing up, then that doesn't matter. You just want a really fast system that if the hard drive crashes, you just rebuild and no problem because you've got a, say, like a Clonezilla image of the array without the data, just with the OS. That's kind of a nice way to do it. Um, but either way that you do it, I mean, if it's two drives plus two drives working simultaneously and you've got those mirroring each other, then uh, it's not going to be as fast as either an SSD or a RAID 0 stripe. So. 
Yeah, he's on a tablet, so a little bit slow responding, but I I, I don't know if I'm any help there. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sometimes, you know, I just not too sure what you're what you're going for. Um how would I do that? I would just honestly I, I wouldn't be too scared of using the onboard because I have a backup all the time. You, but that's in fact do, and that's maybe something to think about. Why are you thinking about having such high redundancy on something that's for production, not for storage? Should you not have something else that's for storage so that you can do your production on a scream and fast system with lots of storage, and then move the files onto something <laughs> that's redundant? I don't know. Just a thought. All right. <laughs> we have a follow-up to uh, stolen laptop here. Oh, is that in there? Yeah. Should we, I w should we, should we uh, do Yeah, this? maybe paraphrase. I yeah. know it's a long one from Carl. Um, had a friend whose laptop got stolen off the front seat of her car. Oh. And uh, bad situation. But, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Oh, kick, nice kick, kick, Yeah, thanks. <laughs> kick, 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 kick. Okay. So, well, thank you so much for taking the time for your busy show this week to answer my questions about the stolen coworker's laptop. Indeed. You, what you said was very helpful with some things I hadn't thought of. Thanks for your advice of ESET security. I think we will be installing that on company laptops right away. I think ESET used to be an advertiser. Um... Do you have a link from the Cat5 uh, so we can get the credit? Or so you can get the credit? Yes. In funny, fact, we do. Funny you should ask. Funny you should ask. Cat5.tv slash ESET will take you to a site where you can order it for Canada or the U.S. You can get a free trial. But uh, smart security is the one we're talking about with anti-theft. So that if someone steals your laptop, you can track it down. Oh, really? Find out where it is. Bring up the webcam. See the person who's sitting in front of it post a message up on the screen um, hey you oh sorry Excuse well i thought about the scenario where you know like some punk kid broke into your car stole your yeah. laptop and sold it to his buddy for 200 bucks that buddy has it sitting at his desk he fires it up and all right here i am you geolocate it using smart security you can find it and then you wait that kid goes to school Mum comes in, starts cleaning the room all of a sudden you do what you pop a message up on the screen that says this laptop is stolen you can do that with smart security. Ooh. Please call 2545-CAP5-TV to report this found. So mom sees that and says, hey, <laughs> Billy's in big <laughs> trouble. I asked you where you got that laptop. Yeah, you said you got it from Joe. And I did get it from Joe. Okay. Why are you beating me? It's just awesome. Sounds very awesome. <laughs> and the sound effects are great, too. Yeah. All right, carry on. Okay. <laughs> Cat5.tv slash ESET. E-S-E-T. Okay, here's a question or comment for, oh, for off-air. <laughs> anyway, um, let's, shall we do it or? Yes. Yeah, well, that doesn't. There is a problem occurring on my to system. Inbox, I use Ubuntu. We're a show. 13.10. All right. Send a picture. Okay. Send a picture, got a problem. Do you have the picture? I'm going to I'm just bringing can up you, your can you email. Can you grab the picture? Just bringing it up. This comes to us from Minaj. Okay. Saving the image to my desktop just to protect your email address for you. Okay. All right. Here we go. Not yours, theirs. I know. No, I yeah. I'm just sure what you're doing. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So we've installed Linux. And here's what we get. The important stuff's right where that flash bulb is. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I need. <laughs> that is what I needed to know. Right there. That's the code. All right, what do we see? Pulse audio. Okay, no big deal. Having a problem with audio. Having a problem with Plymouth. Neither of those things matter. Oh, here's one that matters. Hardware error. CPU zero. And then a whole bunch of processor errors. Looks to me as though you've got a bad CPU. This is... Bad CPU. This is a desktop computer, right? So as a desktop, perhaps the CPU has come out of its socket, um, even just ever so slightly. Uh, did you build this system? Uh, where did it come from? Does it boot up normally? Or is it just when you try to boot Linux? Can you boot a live CD? Um, I like the second from the bottom. Panic from the bottom. occurred. Yeah. Kernel panic. 
can't go any further. It's got no CPU. There's a CPU problem. Fatal machine check. That's what it says. So I think you've either... I mean, it's telling you you've got a bad CPU. I think maybe that <coughs> the CPU has come out of its socket. Um, maybe somebody's tried to uh, adjust the fan or something, and it's a little bit fused to the uh, to the uh, heat sink. You just want to get that Please, cleaned there's up. There's even a uh, rust in peace up there on the <laughs> screen. If, <laughs> if that's the case... If you suspect that that is and, you, and you're not sure what to do with it, take it into an OEM, um, which is a company that f- services these things that, that builds computers. Um, local small computer shops will probably be able to help you. Get that uh, CPU cleaned off. Get it reseated. Get it re-set um, with, uh, with the thermal compound and get the heat sink replaced. And uh, hopefully that would bring it back for you. You can also try, if the CPU is not the problem, try running a mem test from a boot CD just to ensure that it's not the memory itself that's in fact spewing out errors um, and causing it to think that the CPU is bad. That could be, but I think that most likely you're going to find that the CPU itself is throwing that error. Taking it out, resaving it might. Yeah, might but have. only if you know how to do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a stab at it if you've never done it before. Yeah. Because um, then you're getting really deeply in, into the inner components of your computer, which yeah. can be dangerous. So. I had a great screenshot. It didn't look quite like that, but it mm-hmm. was, and it said blah blah blah. No keyboard present. Press, press F1 there. to continue. Uh-huh. I, I always like that. That's great. Okay, let's take a look here. From oh, that was. What great. else you got for me, buddy? We have another question. Well, I converted an old computer. A Dell Optiplex 330 into mm-hmm. a server using Easy Blue software. Easy and, Blue. Well, I would have said EZ, but I'm sure they were aiming for Easy. Okay. Easy Blue software, and it is a Linux-based distro. I am unsure of. Would love some assistance to get it up and running for something other than the print server. Would like to use it as a web or file server or both. Mm-hmm. I have very little experience with Linux and want to leverage the system and utility of Linux. Cool. I've never heard of Easy Blue, or EZ Blue, which, as you say, doesn't. No, I'm have thinking the same it's probably no, it doesn't. That's interesting. So it's like a—is this like a turnkey Linux solution? Okay. So what do we want to do? Are you stuck with Easy Blue, or can we do whatever? So it's a print server right now. We yeah, want to set it up like as a to... web or file server. Okay. So really, just understanding the architecture of Linux and what you need in order to be a file server. On a Windows network, you need something called Samba. Um, your Linux, if you just install a Linux operating system, you'll have the ability to create Samba shares. I'll show you how to do that. Let's say in my GUI, create a folder, and I'll call this my share. And I right click on it and go properties. And do I have it? No, I don't in Point Linux. Let's see. Share folder. There it is. It's just a little bit different on mine. So my share, share folder. You'll see, okay, you need to install at least either Samba or NFS in order to share. So of course, yeah, I'll do that. So let's go in and go Samba, or go into Administrator, Synaptic Package Manager, and we would install Samba or CIFS. And that allows us to now share over a Windows network that folder just by right clicking on it and going share. Oh. So we know just from the error message that yeah we need to install Samba or CIFS. Um, to set up a web server, we've actually touched on it on the show. Um, mm-hmm. If you have a fast enough system that you can do virtualization, Eric and I did a feature on using turnkey Linux and building, right. uh, deploying a LAMP stack. So just go to our website and I'll post links for you in the show notes for episode number uh, 323. Uh, to that episode and that shows you how to use a virtual machine if you're not interested in setting up a virtual machine for that um, the package that you need is called Apache A-P-A-C-H-E and with that your computer becomes an actual web server so and then it's just you know learning some things about security and if you're gonna open it up to the (laughs) to the web there's a lot of reading involved Um, so you want to be you know you want to be careful as soon as you start doing that because if you're open to the web, you, you're also open to potential vulnerabilities of being a web server. So, Indeed. Mm-hmm. Can't believe that that's all the time that we have. Um, happy Thanksgiving to all of our American buddies and everybody celebrating Thanksgiving this Thursday. Um, also, don't forget our crowdfunding campaign is ending. 
We are right down to the wire here, folks. Two dollars each would do it. Literally, everybody watching right now, two dollars. A few hundred of you, fifty bucks would really do it. That'd do it. Yeah. And we'd have the new studio built. And as we've said, there's a lot more to it than just building a new studio. This is really taking Category Five to the next level propelling us into the future and getting us ready so that we can basically show this show to networks so that we can pitch this to syndication partners and become you know available through potentially other mediums through uh, being able to watch through your television set through set top boxes and all those kinds of things it's all in the plans so cat5.tv slash studio thanks so much for your support also don't forget tonight uh, 10 o'clock I'm going to be on the air on Computer America computeramerica.com and next week the lovely and talented Sasha Dermatis will be here looking forward to having her back yeah last time she was here I think she blew up the Enterprise I haven't seen her her since I think I was in the grocery store yeah she She started walking fast yeah (laughs) (laughs) run away run away (laughs) All right, folks well I hope you had a good night tonight and uh, never missed a show these are the smooth sounding vibes of Robbie with a cold yeah. <laughs> Take care, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday night. See you then. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.